What does the death of Lazarus teach us? That's what we're going to find out today in John 11. This is amazing story inside of John. We hear about Lazarus. We know that Jesus loves him, his friend, his sisters, Mary and Martha, which we hear about in other places in the Bible was staying in Bethany, which is two miles from Jerusalem. Super close. We know that the temple structure wants to take Jesus out. So this is a dangerous place for Jesus to be. You know, when you're escaping the power, you're off in the desert, you're away, you're farther away from the reaches. Boy, being that close to Jerusalem, that is the center of action when it comes to the temple's power. It's the first time in the story that we've heard the name Lazarus even though we heard of Mary and Martha earlier. And this is going to be the one. And of course, Mary was the one that poured the perfume on Jesus' feet and got Judas all wound up about, wouldn't that money be better used if it was going to go to the poor? Which he didn't care about the poor. So she comes running up. Lord, the one you love is sick. I always think that's kind of funny because we always hear like John is the apostle that Jesus loved. And Lazarus is the dude that Jesus loved, his friend. But I'm sure that Jesus loved us all, so it's kind of interesting to me in general. The word sick can be weak. It could be an illness. It doesn't necessarily mean something that's going to lead to death. And the word loved is filio, like Philadelphia. This is a brotherly love. When Jesus heard it, he said that this illness does not lead to death, but it is for the glory of God. So this is going to be something that happens that is used to glorify God. It says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and Lazarus. So he loved all three of them. The second time the word love was used, that Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, that was the word agape, which is more than friend, but is sort of a a love that understands and cares. It's like the all-encompassing love. And so it was a different love. Interesting. You know, we don't say love in different ways, But we know other phrases in our language where we have many different levels where people don't have levels. I live in a place where we talk about different kinds of snow, but I know that the Inuit in way up north, they have 400 terms for snow. So we say love, but love means many different things. And when he heard he was ill, he stayed in the place two more days. He didn't run off. The sister that was sent to him She didn't make a specific request. I think it's one of those things that when you know someone has something in hand, they are trustworthy. They are the person who always knows what to do. They're going to do the right thing. Then afterward, he's like, okay, let's go back to Judea, meaning we're going to go right into the hornet's nest of where the temple structure has all their power. Two miles is where Bethany is from Jerusalem. So this is going to be dangerous. And they're all like, well, you know, it's not a great idea for us to go. There are rabbis, Jews, meaning the structure that's looking to stone you. Why are we going there again? I'm sure they wanted to whisk him away. Let's do our work out in the countryside where they can't reach us. And Jesus says, and I think it's interesting, are there not 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of the world. Again, that light message. When you're in the light, you don't stumble. But if anyone walks at night, He can't see the light and the light's not in him and you're going to stumble. You're going to trip. So we're learning what it means to have the light in you. And again, they're perplexed. So he goes on and says that Lazarus has fallen asleep and I'm going to go wake him up. But if he's fallen asleep, then he's going to be fine, right? Jesus spoke of his death, meaning he has fallen asleep. He has died. It's already two days later. And so Jesus came right out. Okay, he died. And for your sake, I'm glad that I wasn't there, so that you may believe. No, let's go to him. Now, Thomas, this is the funny part about Thomas. So people, if you look at all the different commentaries, will say, was he talking in faith or was he talking in doubt? Thomas called the twin. Someone suggested the reason he was called a twin was either he was a twin or someone suggested he looks so much like Jesus, they called him the twin. No idea, right? He says, okay, let's go so that we may die with him. I think just because this rumor of Thomas beating doubting, he's like, well, I guess if we're going to go to Jerusalem, I'll go there and die. (laughs) Maybe it's just practical as compared to either optimistic and strong or pessimistic and weak. Jesus then sees where Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days. And we talked about this before. 
that the Jewish people believe that after three days you were dead, dead. Maybe you were going to come back and find your way back into your body before three days. Makes me wonder if it is this inability to recognize comas. Like right now, we can tell when someone's alive and not alive. But even once in a while, we get surprised when someone comes back from a coma. So I wonder if this is like after three days, we know that person's really, really dead. But in this case, it's four days. So the, many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to console them. And these obviously were well known people. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out on the road and met him. And she's like, you know, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But I know that whatever you ask from God, he will give it to you. Jesus is very plain about this. Your brother will rise again. And he clarifies he's the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in him, Jesus, though he die, he shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. You know, die for realsies, right? Do you believe this? I think it's funny because a lot of times when you talk to atheists, they think Jesus and God the Father are begging for people to love them. But it's not true. What The reason that God wants us to believe in him and ask people like this, do you believe, is for our good, for Mary and Martha's good, not for his good, not for God's good. And she's like, you know, I believe you're the Christ and the Son of God. So she knows exactly who he is, who is coming into our world. You came down here to talk to us. She goes in and she calls Mary and saying that, you know, teacher's here, calling for you. And she rose quickly and and ran out to meet in the village. It said that when the Jews who were in the house consoling her saw Mary quickly get up and leave, they went and followed her because they thought she was going off to the tomb to weep. Jesus was there. She fell at his feet and said, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, And all the other Jews that were with her were also weeping. He was moved, and it says his spirit was greatly troubled. He wanted to see where the tomb was, and then it says Jesus wept, our shortest verse in the Bible. But they said that the weeping that Mary and Martha and the Jews did was a mournful, sobbing weep. When you translate this Greek word, it means more um, tears of mourning. And Jews saw him weeping. So we know that there were actually physical tears there. Because they said, oh, well, he lost someone that was his friend. So he, he's just crying because of that. But I think this is more mournful than that. You know, I think in the end, God didn't want us dying. And you see very many places in the Bible where God takes care of people at their death, like Moses. He didn't intend for this to happen to us. We were supposed to live lives in Eden without sin. We picked the wrong way. And now this death is the cost of it. And he's taking it away. It is not taken away yet. And, and same for, for us too. I mean, the apostles all died. Lazarus is going to die again. It wasn't the intention that God had for us. And he knows how devastating this is. And he's, he's about to die too. So there's all sorts of uh, things he must be feeling at this moment. And even after the people around saying, oh, you know, Jesus must have really loved him. Then they kind of snarked at him and saying, well, I mean, couldn't he have also kept that man from dying too? Meaning Lazarus. And you're like, all right, whatever. So then Jesus deeply moved again, comes to the tomb. And it's a cave type of tomb, which there are different kinds of tombs, but they're always usually either these stone boxes or they're these cave tombs. And this was a cave tomb. And so Mary said, no, Lord, don't go in there. Don't open the door. It's going to smell. And, you know, he says, you know, you're going to see the glory of God. Jesus lifts up his eyes, looks to the Father. Father, thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this so that the people standing around me could understand what's going on. He's uh, broadcasting his own healing miracle. And so that they may believe that you sent me. This is going to be the big miracle. Lazarus, come out. I always liked it. Rick Warren always said that if he didn't say the word Lazarus at the beginning, everyone would have walked out of their grave. But he had to be more specific in this case. He comes out. His hands and feet are bound in his cloth. That is a burial. I want to tie him. So then when Jews saw this, the ones who came to comfort Mary, it says some believed, but some went away and told the Pharisees what Jesus did. You always get that image of like you ever have a sibling and you do something wrong and your sibling takes off in a dead run. He could be there to tell mom first that you screwed up, you know, that kind of thing. 
That's what they were doing. They were running so they could tell the chief priest what happened. The chief priest, this is Mechiaphas, and the Pharisees gathered in the council. You know, what are we going to do? This guy's doing these signs. If we let him go on, people are going to believe in him. And Caiaphas says, you know nothing at all, <laughs> nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for his people than a whole nation should perish. It is because he had a prophecy that Jesus would die for his nation. And it says not only for the nation, but also to gather into one, you know, to group people together, the children of God who are scattered abroad, to bring back the nation of Israel. And so he said, you know what? We have to put him to death. Because not only is putting him to death good so that people don't just believe in this falseness that's going on, and this is going to be good things for all sorts of people. So we, we got to put him to death. This has to be the end. Wow. This is an example how we get called off of our faith or our messages from God. Caiaphas heard this message that all the people of God would be brought together, and he thinks them. But instead, it's all of us, all of us. From the very beginning, we were all God's people. Every corner of the earth, we are being called back to believe in Jesus and to believe in God the Father through Jesus. All people are being called back and reunited together. Jesus could no longer walk openly, it says. He would be killed if he did. So he goes into the wilderness in a town called Ephraim, which is going to be one of the 12 tribes, right? of old, and he stayed there for a while with his disciples. Now it says Passover was hand. Many people of the country we know are going to go up to Passover to purify themselves. And they were looking to Jesus to, what are we going to do? What comes next? You know, we should not go to the feast this year. Everyone's going to be looking to kill you and arrest Jesus. Boy, that ends John 11. What we get out of this, Caiaphas is not wrong. This is going to gather the people of God together. As Jesus called it, he wanted to gather his chicks like a hen under his wings. This is going to happen, but it's not going to happen the way Caiaphas thinks it's going to happen. He thinks he's doing the right thing and that he's going to bring back the nation of Israel. This one death is going to do so much good. So what I'm going to meditate on this week is how many times people will do a bad thing in the name of a greater good. How they think they're doing the right thing. They think that they're actually maybe in this case, Caiaphas thought he was doing God's will, but in fact, are doing such evil or harm to other people. What I'm going to pray about is to have that faith that Mary and Martha showed in this particular case. A couple of weeks ago, I did Small Steps with God podcast about the book about how to be Mary in a Martha world. Mary and Martha are such interesting characters, right? And this change that happens this time that we get to meet them with Martha being the cleaner and Mary being the person listening at Jesus' feet, we see more of their personality right now. I'm going to pray that we can have that kind of devotion to be the kind of people that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were. And what I'm going to share with others is the fact that sometimes bad things happen and Jesus will use those things. God will use those things to show people a miracle. Doesn't mean he creates the bad things. He causes those bad things to happen. He did stay away from Bethany, but Lazarus was going to die. But he was going to take this very sad thing for people, sad for even Jesus, and turn it into a miracle so that people could see God and see that God sent Jesus. Wow. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and tell a friend if you wouldn't mind. I appreciate it every time you do that. And have a great day. 